All right, let's talk about the heterojunction equilibrium solution. And uh, of course, that's in the context of this HPT. And um, what we need to do is, of course, solve Poisson equation or the Gauss's law, if you will. And we'll step through it similarly to what we had done with other junctions before. So here we had a PN junction before. Now we're going to look at an NP junction, but out of aluminum gallium arsenide and um, gallium arsenide. So uh, we start out, of course, with a constant Fermi level. Uh, that we draw across, and then we sketch out the uh, L gas uh, N uh, doped uh, band gap. So the conduction band is closer to the Fermi level on the left, and the uh, valence band is way down. L gas is a large barrier material. And uh, we'll draw in the um, vacuum level as well, and then we look at the P side. Now, uh, there we have the valence band closer to the Fermi level and uh, gall uh, gallium arsenide uh, pure has a smaller band gap and the uh, EC is above the uh, Fermi level as expected. Uh, the gap uh, for gallium arsenide is 1.42 EV. For algas uh, here it's uh, 1.8 EV. When you draw the uh, uh, vacuum level in there you see this one has a larger uh, chi 2 than uh, al gas. Okay? What do we do? We connect the vacuum level as we had done before by some smooth potential and we will be calculating again that smooth potential in the next few slides but for now we just draw in a, a smooth potential like that. And then we translate down um, the uh, uh, potential from the vacuum level into the conduction and into the valence band for the L gas side and we do that for the uh, gallium arsenide side as well. And what we find is that we have a, a discontinuous transition between uh, the ga L gas side and gallium arsenide side. And um, so we can draw in barriers like this. I'll say. So what we have here now is a heterostructure. It's a so-called type 1 heterostructure. I'll be going over uh, different heterostructures that are available in our toolbox in the next section. But um, uh, one thing to notice, it's abrupt. And uh, what happens at this junction and how do we get this potential is the next question, right? How do we get uh, the um, uh, the exact distribution of the uh, uh, the potentials that we just sort of drew in. Of course, just like with a PN junction, we have a built-in potential, so there's nothing new in here. And again, what follows is the same rule that if we placed an imaginary carrier here, uh, we go up from the Fermi level up to the conduction band, then up to the uh, vacuum level, add the built-in potential, we can go over to the other side of the junction now, uh, drop down the electron affinity, drop down the gap, climb back up the, um, to the Fermi level. All of these quantities we can determine now. They're either bulk properties or they're determined by the doping. Okay, so we know what the absolute values of those uh, potentials must be. We haven't even, haven't talked yet about the detailed distribution um, of this, uh, this smoothing out potential here, right? It could be all kinds of different distributions we could consider. So that we didn't talk about yet. Uh, but again, this is a closed loop in terms of constant energy. All right. Um, we can, of course, solve the equation above uh, for the built-in potential that is now dependent on the difference in the electron affinities of the two materials. Uh, we had the same expression before when it just depended on the different doping. And so we find the same expressions here. Um, what uh, we are building in immediately though, here's also the, the, the band gap difference between the two materials. Okay, So you can build that in into a shorter hand expression and have the difference here in the two uh, electron affinities. 
All right. Just as a reminder, how do we get to the band bending? Um, we need to solve Poor's own ex uh, ex expression, uh, which is written down in here. The divergence of D uh, is the charge uh, along that direction. Uh, sorry, yeah, the displacement D. Um, and we know that D must be continuous. But in this heterostructure here, the dielectric constant may not have to be the same on the left and the right. Most likely it won't be the same. So we need to carry forward the dielectric constant, which will make the electric field discontinuous. Okay? D is continuous at the interface, the displacement, but not the electric field. Okay, another caveat I want to mention here is that uh, D may not have to be continuous if you have a true surface charge. And why is that? Because really, um, if you have a delta-like surface charge, you could have a step-like uh, behavior in the differential. And what you should really use is the integral form of Gauss's law, which basically says as you integrate over any arbitrary surface uh, and you integrate the displacement field, then you will get the enclosed charge. So if we make a boundary condition at infinity that uh, we have a, a charge uh, a system that is charge neutral, then uh, you have, will have zero fields at the edges, and um, therefore the total enclosed charge must be zero. Okay, and that will help you to solve any of these uh, equations where you might have more strange-looking charge distributions. But let's go back to the recipe that we had pursued before. We said, well, we have uh, depletion regions on the left and the right uh, in our system. And um, we know that at zero field, the edges uh, must uh, result in a, a, a zero field, because in total, we have enclosed charge to be zero. Um, that means that the charge and the length of the uh, depletion regions must balance. And that is independent of the uh, dielectric constants on the left and the right. That's just an expression in the sense of Gauss's law. All right, now we can uh, um, start, say, from the left here and integrate up the charge we find, which are here the exposed donors. And uh, we will have a non-zero field here starting at this point minus xn. And we integrate up to x. and set this the origin to zero, that we know we get an electric field that rises uh, linearly, uh, has a certain value. We could do the integral from the right, starting from here, and have a similar expression. And we can determine the electric fields at the interface. And um, the fields are determined by uh, the distance um, or the length of these um, areas. Uh, of exposed uh, dopants and acceptors, and uh, we have an expression for the electric field. And what's different from what we had before is only that the dielectric constants are different on the left and the right-hand side of this junction. Otherwise, the expressions are exactly the same as what we had in a PN diode. Now, we can get the uh, um, uh, uh, electrostatic potential by integrating the uh, electric field. So we do that here, and we have an expression just like that, just in a sense, again, similar to what we had in a PN junction. And notice that this potential is smooth regardless on the step like or discontin uh, discontinuous behavior of the electric field. Again, the potential is a smooth um, quantity. All right. Now, uh, you can, of course, integrate this up over the whole structure. That includes the whole charge. And you have an expression, again, just like what we had before, for the built-in potential as a function of doping, uh, the, the length of these depletion regions. And now we have explicitly the dielectric constants in there that are different on the left and the right. Of course, we had the um, expressions for the dielectric constants in there, but now they're different on the left and the right. Okay, now we can, of course, with the 
condition like this and an expression uh, for the VBI, we can solve this for the distance uh, of the depletion region in the left hand side and the uh, and the n side and for the p side and these expressions are absolutely equivalent to what we had done before for a p injunction. The only difference is that we carry through the dielectric uh, constants here that used to be outside of the bracket. Uh, now they're carried through explicitly. That's it. Okay. So there's just nothing sophisticated here. We just carry through with the same algebra. Um, so that's it. We've drawn a, a bandage diagram for heterojunction, um, and we will be discussing uh, different types of heterojunctions in the next section. So I'll see you then. Thank you.